Hello, welcome to the MuseScore Cafe for today, uh, Wednesday, May 8th, 2019. And um, uh, my name is Mark Sabatella. I'm the Director of Education for MuseScore, one of the developers. And um, I'm here today uh, as part of my MuseScore Cafe series, a weekly series of uh, chats I do. And today's uh, I'm talking about the Google Summer of Code. Uh, I um, have talked about this in the past, but it's an annual thing, so it's going to come up every year. And <clears throat> I talked about it a, a month or so ago when we were looking for students to submit applications. And uh, as of this week, uh, Google has announced the selections, and we have four students who have been selected to work on MuseScore as part of the Google Summer of Code. So first I want to congratulate the four of you. Um, or can I do it from memory? Of course, there's only four of them. There's Anand, and I hope I'm saying your name right. There's Peter, Song Chao, and Josh. So I'm going to um, talk about each of the projects that were selected, a little bit about what Google Summer of Code is, and just talk a little bit about the projects that are selected, which hopefully will lead to new features in MuseScore in the near future. So Google Summer of Code, if you're not aware, is um, a program that Google has been running for, well, we had our ten, we had the 10th anniversary, 10 year anniversary a couple years ago, so it must be like 12 years now, um, something like that, um, <clears throat> in which Google will sponsor college students uh, to work on open source software. And when I say sponsor, I mean pay. So, um, hey Marcus, um, there's a strange sound. Okay, yeah, so the deal is I am uh, at the school where I teach because I thought this would be an effective place to be, but there's a refrigerator here. Um, is it really distracting? Should I try to move? Was that more? Is that going to be more distracting if I pick up and move? Um, you have to tell me. Um, but anyhow, that's what's happening. I can probably find a, a uh, quieter location here. In fact, let me just do that. Ah, well, I've got all my stuff here. Sorry. Um, it's just going to be like that one time when we had dancing kids in the room next door. Um, so. Um, uh, I'll speak closer to the microphone, and uh, maybe that'll help. Uh, so what was I saying? Oh, yes, yeah, so Google will, will sponsor uh, university students to work on open source software, by which I mean they will actually pay them, and someone who is uh, involved with the open source project will, um, yeah, sounds like, yeah, all right, that's, that's not good then. All right, I, I am going to try to move, since uh, it seems to be an issue. Give me one second. Gather up. Yeah. All right. So we are moving. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. I mean, I had no idea how this stuff was going to show up on the uh, video. So I need to find a quieter location, which I think I can. So uh, Google uh, sponsors students to work on open source software um, by paying them a stipend and uh, they submit applications to be selected and then there is a mentor, someone who actually, let me go this way actually, um, someone who actually works normally on the project and knows the, the code well <clears throat> to mentor them. So I've mentored a few times in the past and I'm going to mentor again this year for one of the projects that I'm going to talk about in a minute as soon as I get to a location. And um, yeah, that's the, that is what the, pro uh, the, um, the program is about. So students submit applications, they describe what they want to work on, the people at the project sort of select from those which they think are worthy of being uh, chosen by Google and then Google decides how many of them to actually uh, accept. Okay. Is it? If I go here, I feel I hear a rumbling over there. I feel like it's quieter if I come this way. So, <clears throat> here we go. All right, is it better now, is the question. That was a, a whole lot of uh, me moving around. I'll see if I can edit that out later. Okay, so, no, I don't want to edit it out because I was talking, and uh, whatever. Um, good. Okay, so, 
So I, I just want to uh, briefly talk about what the, the projects are that were selected. Um, there's four of them, as I mentioned, I think. Um, so I'm just going to go over to where I have information on them. So, okay, so also, let me just put in the link. Uh oh, oh, now I've lost my keyboard. Now I just lost my mouse. Well, that was interesting. Okay. Can I do everything and touch? There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, no idea what's going on with my mouse right now, my touchpad. But, okay. Um, so, um, one uh, project that we have going is um, from Anand who is going to uh, be working on palette accessibility. Uh, and accessibility has been a popular topic. Um, I mentored two projects uh, involving accessibility in the past. It's a topic that's really important to me. I'm not actually mentoring this one. Um, uh, it will actually be uh, Peter, um, Peter Jonas, I think, who is uh, mentoring this one. But the idea is to make the palettes uh, in Muse 4 accessible. And by accessible, we specifically mean keyboard accessible. Oh, this is going to be a drag, not having the keyboard. So what happened while I was dragging it? Something got disconnected. That's weird because the keyboard still works. Yeah, I don't know what to say here. Oh, there's my mouse again. Okay, so the palettes are over here, and right now the only way to add elements from the palette <coughs> is using the mouse. And keyboard access is something a lot of users um, request because you know it's a lot more efficient. And some some symbols do have keyboard shortcuts, but not all of them. Not even not even most of them. Um, and for, for most of us, that's just a convenience thing. But if you're a blind user, it's not convenience. It's the only way. You can't use the mouse to hover over a symbol and then drag it to your score or whatever. It, <clears throat> you can't find the symbol. You're not seeing the symbol. You can't. Basically, the mouse is not an option if you're blind. And we do uh, strive to make music score usable by blind musicians. Um, ah, really? Oh, well. 240p. Well, I, 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 I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to plow ahead because I have... Oh, it's probably that it's dark. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that doesn't explain anything because that's just my face. Um, but let me take my face out of the picture because, you know, it's not really needed to be there anyhow. Um, the screenshot's the screenshot, so it is what it is. Um, um, so uh, palette accessibility is uh, going to make the palettes keyboard accessible in some format. We had a previous project that I mentored that involved adding shortcuts to palettes that a lot of code was written, but it didn't quite make it into MuseScore. Yeah, and so that code is still sitting there waiting to be adapted. And then there's other means of, of accessing palettes, including by uh, actually navigating with the keyboard, you know, using the cursor keys to navigate through the palettes. Um, so lots of different ways that we could make the palettes accessible. So that's a non's project. Um, then the next project, <clears throat> I don't know how, um, you know, pr private or whatever these projects are supposed to be, so I'm not going to like focus on the actual screen here. But um, uh, Josh Wood is implementing uh, improvements to inter instrument changes. And uh, among other things here, literally YouTube says, wow. Wow, really? Now that's surprising. Now my phone looks good. You know, this still looks it still looks fine on my phone, so I don't know. Um, so I, I, I don't. I'm sorry, I just don't know. I'm just going to plow ahead because this is more about me talking than showing anything anyhow because I don't have anything to show you. The projects haven't started. Um, so the palettes... Um, uh, yeah, I talked about the palettes, the instrument changes. Um, so uh, right now we do support the ability to like, I can enter notes and they sound like piano. And I can then enter uh, an instrument change from the text palette here, change instrument, and change instrument here. And then I can say change instrument and change it to say uh, oboe. And now, it sounds like an oboe. And if 
there had been a um, you know if if there had been a transposing instrument it would have transposed it a lot of things work about this but if you're changing between a pitched and an unpitched instrument like you want to have someone you know put down you know pick up a whatever a, um, a tambourine and start hitting the tambourine you want to notate tambourine on the piano staff you're basically not going to get that <clears throat> so um, I can try to move just uh, in case the Wi-Fi resolution is a little better if I sit over here so I'll come out here um, so uh, no idea if that's gonna help um, so um, uh, yeah, if you want to change from a pitch to an unpitched staff, we don't really support that. We can let you change the number of staff lines because we have a separate element here, the staff type change that you can add, and then you can change and have it be um, only four lines there, three lines, two lines, etc. And then you can use this offset to say you want it, oops, uh, I guess that's changing where the notes are on the lines, not like you, the line won't be centered here. Oh, that's up here. That's the offset. There we go. All right. So we have these facilities, but they're two totally different facilities. There's the instrument change facility and then the staff type change facility. They're not synchronized and um, you can't change between pitched and unpitched. So one of the more important things that people might want to use this facility for just isn't there. So Josh's project is going to be to try to bring all this stuff together, synchronize, get, get things working together better, um, and get this stuff working. So that is what um, Josh's project is about. Okay, looks good now. All right, good to know. Um, so um, that's Josh's project, and um, yeah, bo both of those projects uh, I feel really good about. I, I, I feel like the problem is really well understood, and um, uh, we have, and the, the, the people I think are going to be able to get the job done. All of them are actually. So then the next one is um, uh, actually this is Peter, and this is the um, project I am mentoring, and it's about chord symbol playback. If you were following the uh, cafes a couple months ago, a few months ago, you saw I did a, an episode on chord symbols, and um, I sort of put together a cheat sheet that had voicings for all these chords that you could then download that cheat sheet and copy and paste it copy and paste chords into your um, score so that you could hear um, what a C7 sounds like by copying the C7 from my score if, if, if you didn't want to have to enter it yourself. And I had all sorts of you know, jazz voicings and things that actually sounded pretty good. Um, but that's a lot of work to use that cheat sheet. Um, and then you could make the staff invisible so, so it would just sound. You wouldn't have to see the notes. So uh, it's for a long time people have wanted to hear some sort of automatic playback of chord symbols. And I, I think it's finally time. It's finally going to happen. And so Peter's going to be implementing this over the summer. And hopefully we'll have uh, something to show for it. Maybe uh, MuseCore 3.2. Because 3.1 is coming very soon within the next few weeks. Um, but, you know, probably there'll be a 3.2 that comes uh, you know, maybe later this year that has some of these changes. I don't know. I'm just speculating about how it's going to work. So the idea would be you would add a chord symbol to your score, like C7, and then it would play that back somehow. I think his proposal involves right-clicking the chord and having some option show up, or maybe it would end up being in the inspector, where you can control different aspects about how it would play back. Maybe, you know, you'd have control over the sound or the voicing used, um, you know, we're not, you know, the details of this is still stuff for um, Peter and I to work out now, um, but the idea would be that you would be able to hear playback and then hopefully also hit a button and have uh, a staff, have the notes actually added to the staff so then you could edit it and play around with the rhythms and so forth because most likely there won't be anything fancy that's done with the rhythms as part of this project. So chord symbol playback is project number three. And project number four is um, a plugin manager. So every once in a while, you've seen me talk about using plugins. There's one in particular that um, I've uh, used. I think I've, if I have that, do I have my plugins? No, this, I'm using a development build. I don't have my plugins installed here. Um, but um, yeah, get small. All right. Um, if I have an E flat here, and then a bunch more E's, it's it's an E here. 
you're supposed to have a courtesy accidental on this E, and um, that doesn't get added by default, but you're really supposed to add it. So we have a plugin to add courtesy accidentals. But I only have that because I downloaded it and installed it through the, the, um, through the plugin manager here. I had to go to the website to download it and so forth. Um, so the, uh, the, this fourth project, that is uh, Song Chao, is the uh, student working on this, is going to be a, a plugin manager that would allow you to, to find, like have a plugin store basically online where directly from within MuseScore you can find plugins you want to install and it will install them for you as opposed to you having to go. Like right now the way you would get to plugins if you wanted to is you go back to um, here and you go to this is MuseScore.org you go to download plugins Light picture making noise now. I'm getting really sensitive to this stuff. Um, and you find these are all these plugins that have uh, been updated to work with MuseScore 3. The, the list has grown since the last time I looked, which is great. Um, you download the thing, and then you have to um, unpack it if it's an archive, and then you and then you go back to MuseScore and load the thing up. It's it's not that bad, and we have instructions for it. But we want to make it simpler, like the way the MDL extension is. We have we have this uh, extension. Um, that you can install if you go to help resource manager um, you'll see that there's um, the idea of a package of things that doesn't actually involve plugins this is a package of things that includes uh, palettes and sound fonts and I forget what else um, but this is a way then you can just easily say hey I want to install that package and you don't have to go visit a website you don't have to hit a download button there and go find the file and load it you don't have to do any of this stuff you just go to the extension manager and hit an install button and it all works magically um, so the fourth project, Song Child's project, is going to be doing a similar thing for uh, plugins to make it really easy to install plugins. <coughs> so um, that's basically um, what's going on with um, uh, that's going on with uh, Google Summer of Code. The next couple of weeks, I forget the exact length of the period, is what's called the community bonding period, where the, the students just kind of come up to speed on things. Most of the students have already been doing that. They've already submitted their bug fixes for things to learn their way around the code. Um, <clears throat> and, um, but then starting uh, in a few weeks or whenever the date is, I forget the, the exact date, um, they're supposed to actually start actively working on their project and have weekly progress reports. and. Um, and will mentors will be conversing with them regularly to make sure that they're getting done what they say they're going to get done and get it done in a timely fashion. We'll have evaluations and um, assuming everything works out then uh, the student uh, passes and they get paid and the the code becomes part of MuseScore. Actually what you know it, it, we could it sometimes and often in fact happens that the, the students will be passed um, but maybe the code gets included in MuseScore right away. Sometimes it takes a while. Maybe it, you know, it either happens or it doesn't happen. Um, but anyhow, that's um, what's going on for Google Summer of Code this year. So those are the four projects, and to me, they all seem very viable. They're all nice. Sometimes there's a project that's we accept it because we know there's some part of it that's going to be useful even if maybe the whole thing doesn't happen. But I think all of these are completely doable. They're very well-defined projects, and they should all totally be doable. Um, so they cover different areas. There's the accessibility area. There's um, the area of playback with the chord symbols, the area of um, just program usability in terms of plugin manager, and the first one that I already forgot what <laughs> the first one was that I talked about. Uh, oh, pilot accessibility, instrument changes, that's the other one. So yeah, a couple that has to do with both playback and notation. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll be hearing more about the status of these projects over the course of the year. You can come join us on the forum and uh, take part in discussions because the students will be uh, asking questions to collect feedback on, on the work they're doing and make sure that the way they're doing things is the way users want. That's how we like to do things. So uh, we encourage you to stay involved by coming to the forums and um, uh, well, that's what I got for you. Um, so uh, 
I will, I think, sign off here because this has been a bit frantic here. Um, and uh, I feel like I just uh, will let it go at that. Uh, next week, I'll have a new topic to talk about. As always, I'm uh, up for suggestions if you want to leave any in the comments. And um, I will, uh, I, have, I have something I've been working on that I'll be excited to show you if it ends up definitely getting included in, in MuseScore. Um, so I'll drop that little teaser that there's a potentially a nice improvement to MuseScore that may be coming soon um, that I hope, hope to be able to show off soon. All right, so I will uh, sign off, and uh, good luck to the um, Google Summer of Code students, and uh, thanks everyone for uh, tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye.